Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and that which is yet to come. Father, we just pray your will be done here this day, Lord. We welcome all those who are live streaming. Lord, that we may all know and have a revelation of your heart and the love that that brings. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians, um, I'll just tell you what we're going to do. We're just going to have a small talk um, and then we're going to move in the gifting. We do have a team of people that um, have been praying leading up to this um, Sunday who move in the gift of prophecy and they've been seeking God um, just for uh, a word or whatever for um, people here today. I'd also like to encourage the U-turners who move with the prophetic gifting um, to be open to that as well. And um, when it comes to a time of ministry, if you just... Um, I'll be standing somewhere here. If you just come up to me, um, just so that we can um, work together, if you feel that you have a word from the Lord. Um, we saw that scripture at the beginning, 1 Corinthians, I better put my thing up. 12, 7 to 11, that lists, lists all the spiritual gifts. And, you know, God is a very gracious Father, and we all, when we're born, we're all b- born with a gift. And God brings that gift to life when we give our life to him. And in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 4, it says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. And prophecy is a great blessing to the church as are all the other gifts. We need every single gift in the body of Christ. But what prophecy does is it, it does three things. From 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, it strengthens, it encourages, and it comforts. And we need that in the body of Christ. We need that as a people. And I've just had a bit of help today um, from Mike Bickle, Stacey Campbell, and Bruce Yoakum. I'm just also drawing just from some of the things that they've shared on prophecy. And I just want to read you something from um, Mike Bickle. He says... If I am merely seeking information from the mind of God, then I've missed the point. The essence of the prophetic ministry is to have the revelation of God's heart and to move out in love in that heart's revelation. Prophecy reveals the heart of God. He goes on to say, The prophetic ministry is to be stamped and sealed with an affection for and a sensitivity to the heart of God. It is a ministry that passionately feels and reveals the divine heart to the church and to the world. Prophetic ministry has to do not only with information, but also with the ability to experience the compassion, the grief and the joy of God, and then to gain a passion for God. And it's really important. Um, Rosalie touched on something really important at the end of her testimony where she spoke about um, relationship with God and that she really just wanted to press into God to know him. And um, intimacy is the key to hearing. And in there's a couple of things that I just had a sense that the Lord wanted us to just run through really quickly before we start moving in the gifting. And that's revelation, interpretation, and application. So the first thing is revelation. It simply is what has been revealed, what has God revealed to us. Interpretation is asking God, what does that mean? What does it mean? Application is simply, what do I do with that? Do I want to do it? Do you want me to do anything with that? Sometimes God will give us something, but he doesn't necessarily want us to give it. It could be simply for us to pray about a situation, about a person. So the importance here is going back to God. We need to seek God because we don't want to move in presumption and we definitely don't want to guess, okay? So we, can't, we don't want to operate out of our mind. We want to know the heart of God. We want to seek him. 
and we want to move out of that so that the body of Christ is blessed. And I was trying to think of an example, but, you know, I just, I was having a, a little bit of trouble of my own. There's probably plenty there. But, you know, we have a tendency to, to that when we hear, so I'm kind of speaking now, especially to people who, who have a prophetic gifting where we mix up revelation and interpretation. And the tendency has always been there. Even the Old Testament prophets did that. You know, when they prophesied about, um, about Jesus, you know, and they said that he was both a kingly Messiah and a suffering servant. But no one would have considered that they were both the same person. Kingly Messiahs aren't servants and they don't suffer. So even the disciples had a hard time with it. You know, they were with Jesus. They walked with him. They listened to him. They talked with him. They had fellowship with him. Yet they still missed it. So we're going to miss it. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. We're not perfect. And sometimes things are a lot clearer, you know, once they've been real. But God wants us to do something. He wants us to search him out. He wants us to behold him. He wants us to trust him. You know, we're looking for a word. He's looking for a relationship. We want to be open when we receive that revelation because we don't want to miss what God is trying to say. Remember, prophecy is always in love for someone else to build them up, to strengthen them, to bring them the comfort of God. And um, um, Tony Saxon, the, the guy that's coming here in a couple of weeks, did a conference here once and he said that prophecy should feel like you've just been loved on by God and that's how it should feel. And in the church today, that's why it's so important. The number one, we're really blessed that we're open to the Lord moving in that way in this body of Christ because God wants to build the body of Christ up. We all need strengthening. We all need encouraging and we all need comfort. So we're really blessed that we're open to those things. We all need it. Um, I'll give you an example um, where we have to remember that when we interpret what God has given us, um, again, this is especially for those of you who hear God prophetically, we all have the ability to hear God. But as you saw that scripture from the beginning, we're all given a different gift that God gives us to operate in within the church. And um, we need the revelation because if it's wrong, we can cause chaos. And I'll give you an example from... um, that Mike Bickle just shared about something that happened in his church. So one of the prophetic ministers had a word for someone in the congregation and um, he went on to share the word publicly in front of everybody, obviously, Um, and he publicly shared that the man had no integrity with his finances. Now, when the leaders of the church including Mike, um, spoke to the prophetic minister later on. Um, They questioned him as to, you know, what did he see? What was the sense that he had? And he had shared that he saw a dark cloud over the area of the man's finances. Okay, so that's what was revealed. God revealed that to the person, the prophetic minister. Okay, so that's the revelation. Um, Now... Unfortunately, what happened was the man didn't pursue God and he didn't ask God, well, what does that mean? He just jumped ahead of God. Presumption, uh, guessed, I don't know. Uh, What he presumed that meant was that the man was stealing money, um, but it was actually wrong. What happened soon after the prophecy was that the man's business partner had embezzled a large sum of money from him. Now, unfortunately, in that case, that's why it's really important that we continue to seek God when we hear something like that. Because you've got to remember, everything has to be held in tension with the purpose of the gift operating in the body of Christ. If it doesn't, what are those things, Tony Saxon, stir up, build up and cheer up. So strengthen, encourage and comfort, then we shouldn't give it. Or if we hear something and we're not sure, we need to pursue God. If it falls into those categories, it's always, is that going to make that person feel loved? Are they going to be built up? Are they going to be encouraged? Are they going to be stirred up? If it doesn't do those things, it's probably better off that we don't say it. So the the word was actually should have been a warning for the guy, you know, that, you know, maybe someone was going to steal some money 
for him. Unfortunately, he suffered humiliation and, you know, for a while his integrity was shot, basically. Um, you know, I, in that situation, maybe it could have been delivered a different way. The whole prophecy could have sounded something like, look, perhaps the Lord's showing that there's some kind of dark cloud over you in the area of your finances. Let's pray that the Lord will protect you from an attack of any kind. So loving kindness there replaced judgment because it's always about love. Now, what do we do when we receive a prophetic word from someone? There's a couple of things that we can do. Firstly, if it's the first time that someone's ever given us that prophetic word, we're just going to hold it before God, okay, until he confirms it to us. If someone who moves strongly prophetically gives you a word that's accurate, you say, for example, you're going to have a street ministry, you need to seek God and also your pastor and a mentor. Wait to see what God's going to do. You need to get a confirmation from the Lord. If you're honestly seeking to do the will of God, then God is going to bring you to that place. Okay, but once God's given you the confirmation, you've heard, okay, so you've heard something. God's spoken something to you in your own time with him and then someone gives you a prophetic word, which is a confirmation to you. It might be a confirmation, okay, move. We've had lots of those situations in our business where we've prayed, where we've sought God. We haven't sought a word, but we've sought God first because we want to do his will. That's what we want to do. And so we've prayed, we felt him say something, we hold it in our hearts, we continue to pray, and then someone randomly would ring us up and give us a prophetic word, which would be a confirmation. And when we got that, we knew God was asking us to move. I don't mean move country, I mean move in what he was telling us to do. And so don't, don't sit. I mean, you can ask God for two or three confirmations, but once God's confirmed it, don't sit, move, provided... You're doing those things. It's really important that you're sharing your life with someone, especially if you feel God calling you out, that you have someone over you that you can share it with, who can pray as well. Because we don't want to just go off in a wrong heart and do our own thing. Does that all sit okay with everybody? Okay, so words that revolve around new direction, moving countries, new ministries should always be prayed through and pastoral advice and input should be sought. Okay, there's blessing, there's protection and there's freedom when we come under authority in that way. And um, it's important that, you know, we can hear, we can have the best word, we can, but really the important thing is intimacy with God. And really that's the key of this talk today, it's intimacy with the Father. If I don't have intimacy with God, how do I know his voice? God, I have, time. I have to spend time with God. I have to know him. How do I know him? I know him through his word. I can know him through people. I know him in my time with him. It's really, really important. Intimacy requires freedom, not formula. There has to be a freedom in intimacy with God. It's simply Intimacy is simply sharing your heart with God. That's all it is. It's taking time to be with God the Father, stopping everything that's happening and spending time. And what happens in that, in that time with God, you get to know who he is. You also learn a lot about yourself. But you know his voice. So that as you journey along, especially um, people who are prophetic, as you journey along, it's really important that you know the voice of God because there's other voices out there. Intimacy requires honesty. Okay, it's as much listening as it is sharing. Uh, John 10, 27 to 29 says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Okay, so it's important that we spend time with God. What You know, God... God does things when we do that. He changes us. You know, there's that scripture in Romans 12 too, do not conform your pattern to the world, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And I find that when, as I spend time with God, I don't think like I used to think. When I first came back to God, I thought many things that weren't right, but I didn't know that. I did many things that weren't right, but I didn't know that. And it was only through really pressing into God and seeking relationship with him, intimacy, just wasting time with God, that he started to transform, renew my mind. And that was really important because what happens in that, then I'm more aligned with him and his heart. Not, I don't want to think like I used to think because there can be a captivity in that and it can actually block me. I want to, want to know his heart. I want to know his mind and I only get that when I spend time with him. I also know when he's not speaking to me. I went through a time, and this happens to all of us, whether we're prophetic or not. I went through a time where I could not hear God. And it, it devastated me. It really, really devastated me. Because what happens is, maybe you're not like me, but the first thing I thought was, what have I done wrong? Have I sinned? And, but it's, it, was, it was none of those things. And I remember going to Phil and saying, you know, Phil, I don't know what's happening. I just can't, I can't hear God anymore. I don't hear him saying anything to me. And, and Phil's really good for me. Phil said, well, maybe he's just not speaking. <laughs> and um, Phil then went on to say to me, you know, it's a bit like um, people, uh, young people probably don't listen to the radio very much, but... You know, for, for those of us who know radio and when you're trying to tune into a station, Phil was saying to me, you know, when you're going between stations, there's a lot of static and you cannot hear. Until you hit the right frequency, then you can hear loud and clear. And he said he was probably just trying to teach you when you're hearing loud and clear and when you're not. But there was something else that was going on. God was testing my heart. He, was, he wanted to know what was in my heart. What was I after? Was I, was I putting the gift above him? Was he more important than the gift? I can treat the gift like an idol. And God doesn't want me to do that. I can treat a prophetic word like an idol. And we need the prophetic word, but we can't place it above God. It's really important that we place God first. And so God showed me what was in my heart. That's a blessed place to be in because it's never condemnation. That's the love of God that puts us in that place because he doesn't want us to stay there. So it was humbling, but it was good for me. I need to ask myself a question. Am I seeking the gift? We all need to ask ourselves that. It's what I do. Am I seeking the gift more than the giver? I don't, I, I don't want to do that. I want to seek the giver more than the gift. I need to know his voice. As it says in John, I, I, you know, my sheep know me and I know them. God knows each one of us intimately. Read Psalm 139. He knows everything about us, every thought, every word, even before it's on our tongue. He knows it. Every struggle, every disappointment, every failure, every difficulty, every temptation, every joy, every blessing, every good thing, God knows us intimately. He wants us to get to know him intimately. Joe's been speaking a little bit about this to us over the last one to two months and about the friendship that Abraham had with God. It's intimacy. It's a love relationship. That's what, that's what he wants for all of us. The wonderful thing is we're all qualified. <laughs> we're all qualified. doesn't matter who we are. doesn't matter where we are. doesn't matter what we've done or haven't done. That relationship is available to each and every one of us. We are truly blessed. And even those who don't know God, he calls them because he wants them to know his love. He wants them to come into that wonderful fellowship with him. We are so blessed. What an offer. What an offer that God gives us to come into that relationship. That's all that matters. doesn't matter. Any, everything else doesn't matter. Really, if I've got relationship with God, I have everything, absolutely everything. How do I cultivate it? The only way I cultivate the intimacy is by spending time with him. I've got to do it. And it's really hard in this day and age because everybody's pressed for time. 
time. It's, it's, it's a robber, <laughs> can be a robber of, of, of intimacy with God. But it's just us making a decision. No, I'm going to have that time with the Father because it's so important. Because then we want to move out of that relationship. We want to have the love of God dwelling in us and move out of that so that people are blessed, people are encouraged, people know Christ who lives in me. So important. So important. Delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 37.4 says, delight yourself in the Lord. What does that mean? It means to know him, to love him, to serve him. He gives you, he'll give you the desires of your heart when you delight in him. It means delighting in the things that he loves, things that are good, things that are pure, things that are holy, things that are trustworthy, things that are praiseworthy, things that give life and love and hope and encouragement and peace. That's delighting in God. And when he does that, all of a sudden your focus has shift, shifted you're not looking at yourself anymore. You're not seeking after what you want. You're seeking after what God wants. Then he'll give you the desires of your heart because they'll come into line with what he wants. It's a blessed place to come to. Behold him. What does it mean to behold? Gaze upon God. <laughs> Waste time with him. Be a be a, 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 a beer, not a doer. Just, just be with God. That's all he wants us to do, to be with him. And in that, we move out of that. That doesn't mean I, I, I pray, I go into my room, I shut the door. That's right, that's scriptural. But God doesn't want me to stay there. He wants me to come out. He wants me to come out to go out to, to, go out to be a witness, to take his love out, especially to those who don't know that everyone has a saviour who's come to set them free from the law of sin and death. They need to know, we need to know. That's, how, that's why Phil and I are here. But someone came and shared the gospel with us. God did a mighty work. So, be a be a be a be a be a um, a be a not a doer. But you can't be a be a all the time because God wants you to also be a doer. So there's that balance of both. Two prophets who beheld God were Elijah and Daniel, and um, it says in James, you know, like we we might read about Elijah and Daniel, we might read about the wonderful things that Elijah did. But in James 5.17, it says, Elijah was a man just like us, but he prayed. He had intimacy with the Father and he moved out of that. That intimacy caused Elijah to have faith to change nations, to face down false prophets, to believe for rain in the middle of a drought. That's a word for somebody here today. That the Lord would say to you, believe for rain in the middle of a drought. To raise the dead, to prophesy to hostile kings. It was through his intimacy with God that he came to know him. It was a lifestyle for him. And Daniel, the same thing, great intimacy with God. Sought God, prayed three times a day. I'm not saying you have to do that. The key is actually spending time with God. And what both of those prophets from the Old Testament received, they received because of their relationship with God, because they spent time in his presence. The more they beheld him, the more they gazed upon him, the more they shut things out and invited him in, the more they gave themselves to him and gave him time, the more he revealed himself to them. Deeper revelation comes from deeper love. Just encourage us all to fall deeper in love with God. Deeper understanding comes from beholding God, from gazing upon him, from giving your best. You know, I, I just think it would be really good even just, to, you know, if you're able to give yourself a challenge. Try doing that faithfully for, you know, whatever amount of time, six months, a year, a month, three months, whatever. Do it faithfully with a right heart and see, see what God is like, that you would know him greater, that you would know him deeper, that you would taste and see that indeed the Lord is good, as it says in the Psalms. The importance of love. One can operate in a prophetic gifting 
and can understand all mysteries and all knowledge, yet not have love. If I'm pursuing an intimate relationship with Jesus and I don't know him, then his love will not flow through me. If I have no love in my heart, then I'm nothing before God. If I pursue the gift but do not have love, I'm nothing. There's a a difference, a vast difference between the anointing and the motivation of our heart. And God is very good that when we spend time, when we get to know him intimately, when we seek after him in that way, he, he reveals to us the motivation of our heart. And that's when change comes. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Maybe I can prophesy great mysteries and knowledge. Maybe I can know details about someone's life. Maybe I can know all of those things. But if it doesn't produce an increase in love, then it's, just, it's nothing. It's worth nothing. So remember, 1 Corinthians 14, 3, to strengthen gift of prophecy is to strengthen, to encourage and to comfort. And that's what God wants to build us up. He wants to bless us. It changes us. It changes situation. The prophetic word releases a power of the Holy Spirit. It changes the way we see things. It can move us. And so what do you do? One of your questions might be, what do I do when there is no word? The first thing is if, I've, if you've received a word and, and you're still waiting on God, you know, look, there's, there's people here, there's, there's people, there's famous people who, you know, Heidi Baker is one of them who the Lord gave her a word and she had to wait 10 years. So she just kept seeking God. That's what God wants us to do, to keep seeking. But she remembered what was spoken over her. And that's what Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.18. He was reminding Timothy, encouraging him to remember the prophecies that were spoken over him to encourage Timothy to stand, to persevere, to fight on. So when you don't hear a word from God, that's what you do. Remember what Paul said to Timothy. Remember the prophecies that were spoken over you and just press into God. God will bring it, God will bring it about. Just be faithful to God. If you've never received a prophetic word before, and some of you that are here today may not have received a prophetic word and and maybe the Lord will will bless you and give you a prophetic word today. Um, But if you've never received one before and you don't receive one, go. When you go home, have some time with God. Go into your room, seek God, seek his word. Ask him to speak to you through his word. Ask him for a word that will bless you and build you up and encourage you and strengthen you and comfort you so that you know he's a good father. Before we go, before we um, move, every, just four things, every true prophetic word should point to him. It should unveil him. It should reveal him. It should testify to who he is and what he's done. It should draw a person unto Jesus so that when people are here giving a prophetic word today, it should draw that person that receives it closer in love with the Lord. Prophecy should be tested. You have to test it, okay? Is it in line with the word of God? It doesn't necessarily have to be word for word, but it must not go against scripture, okay? If it does, throw it out. If in doubt, throw it out. Um, I don't think that's my line either. I think that's someone else's. Um, I need to act in faith. I need to seek confirmation. It's important that I have people over me that I can share with. A pastor, someone who's a mentor. Really, really important that I do that. Otherwise, I can go off all over the place. But it won't be for the glory of God. Remember, this is always about God. It's never about, it's never about us. Remember, prophecy should feel like you've just been loved on by God. And the last thing, prophetic people only hear in part and we can get it wrong. Don't stone the prophet. They're simply stepping out in faith in response to what they've had a sense that the Lord's given them. So when people come up here today, they've honestly been seeking God to be open to move in the gifting and it's a faith step. 
because some of us are going to have something and it may not be right, but that's okay. And there's a humbling in that and that's okay as well. But we don't ever want to not move out in faith because someone may be blessed and if we're wrong, we're wrong. We get it right in part only. And so if you get a prophetic word today, um, it's really helpful to the people who are going to be open prophetically if you can actually let them know, was that right? So, you know, what will happen is um, we'll ask you your name if we don't know you. Um, someone's going to have a word for you. It's all different. We all operate differently because we're all unique. So the way the gift operates in me is not the way it operates in Phil. Okay, so we're all different. We're all unique. And we have to move with the gifting that God's put in us in our, in our character, not in someone else's. But if it's right, it's really helpful if you actually are able to say, yes, that's, that's right. Because that just encourages also the person who's stepping out in faith. If it's not right, you can say so as well. All these people that have been praying, they're, they're okay for you to say that, but it's important for them to know. Um, some people, there may be um, some names that, that, that are given out today uh, in a prophetic sense. If there's... Um, if if that's you, but you're a little bit um, um, embarrassed, not embarrassed, because nothing will be embarrassing, but if you're a bit shy or you don't want to respond to it, that's fine. But if it's right, we would encourage you at the end um, to come up and get some prayer and just let somebody know that, look, that word was for me, okay?